This code sample includes two files. We have the source code of the servlet we define, a servlet that uses the WebSocket server bundled with Tomcat. In addition, we have a simple HTML file that includes bits of JavaScript that use the WebSockets API. So let's first take a look at the servlet. Uh, in order to define a servlet, you just need to define a class that extends one of those available classes that implements servlet. Uh, in this case, we define a class that extends WebSocket servlet. Here we have a set, a set that will hold references for chat user objects. Each one of them represents a specific user. Here we have uh, an atomic integer object. ID generator is assigned with a reference for a new atomic integer object. Um, we can use uh, an atomic integer object in order to make sure that each and every user has its own um, ID. So we could avoid that, but if, for instance, we would have received two requests to connect the chat at the very same time, then um, we could get some problems. But in general, when the chat is not uh, very hectic, we could avoid using this uh, class. Uh, over here you can find uh, the definition for the inner class chat user. Uh, we should define a class that extends message inbound. Uh, the idea is that each request uh, will be represented uh, by an object instantiated from the class we define as a class that extends the abstract uh, class message inbound. Uh, once the connection is established, then unlike uh, HTTP protocol, we get uh, a stream fluent connection uh, just as if we were using TCP IP. Uh, let's take a look at this method, the create WebSocket inbound. It is a method um, we extend from WebSocket servlet and we must um, define it. If you check the, the API documentation for uh, WebSocket servlet class, you will find that uh, this method is uh, abstract. So if, for instance, I would have deleted the definition for that method, uh, as you can see, we get an error, a compilation error. Uh, the idea is that each time a request is arrived uh, for uh, setting a WebSocket connection, then this method is invoked, and here I should return uh, a reference for the uh, object that represents that uh, connection, that uh, request for a connection we have just received. So uh, that's why we define the class that extends message inbound so we could return over here uh, the reference for the uh, object, for the message inbound object that uh, represents the new connection. Now let's take a look at the class chat user. As you can see, uh, when the class is instantiated, uh, then we make sure to um, give a name for the incoming uh, request. So the user that has just sent a request for uh, set setting up the connection as from now on a, a username composed in this code sample from this text and uh, a number, a number that was incremented 
comparing with the previous request, we could of course um, develop something a bit more sophisticated so that we shall get, let's say, uh, the nickname uh, the user chose uh, and so on. Now let's take a look at the methods defined within the chat user class. So over here we define the method on open. Uh, this method will be indirectly invoked once uh, the connection is opened. So here we place the code we want to, to be executed when uh, the connection is opened. So when a request arrives for setting up a connection and everything works fine, this method is invoked. As you can see, the name includes the word on. It is a callback function. We don't invoke this function. There is already code others uh, wrote that take care of calling this function. So on our end, what we can do is just uh, adding an, um, the new chat user object that has just been created to the collection of those chat user objects that represents all um, users on the chat. We can also take this opportunity and um, create some sort of a message we want to broadcast to all users. And as you can see, the function broadcast we defined over here just take care of sending the string we pass over to each one of the users. Each one of the users currently on the chat is represented by a chat user object and over here we simply hold a collection of uh, uh, those chat user objects so we can iterate these objects and um, take care of sending the text, the text composed from the username and uh, over here the text uh, has joined the chat. Right now we go over the on open function and that text will arrive to each one of the users. Uh, if there is some problem we can of course handle that problem but I try to keep the code sample as simple as possible. Uh, on close, this is the callback function that will be invoked when the uh, connection is closed. So we should take care of removing uh, the chat user object from the collection uh, of those uh, chat user objects that represent all users and broadcast a new message such as uh, that username has left the chat. Um, over here I chose to avoid the support for binary messages, uh, kind of uh, images, uh, video stream, etc. just for the sake of keeping the sample as simple as possible. Let's take a look at the HTML file. This file, if you try to browse it, but first uh, let's uh, rerun the servlet. Okay, it works fine. Now, uh, if I try to browse the HTML file, uh, this is what I get. If you go over the file, you can find a bit of CSS and then we have um, div element for showing all messages and an input element for allowing the user to enter a message and send it to all participants. If you take a look over here, I can say hello and as you can see, the message is sent to all participants. Currently, this is the only participant. But if I try to browse the same uh, HTML page from another window, as you can see, <laughs> a new guest has just joined the chat. And we see that in both uh, screens. 
and so on. So now we have three participants, and if this one say uh, shalom, everyone, then as you can see, we get that message in each one of the um, screens, each one of the windows. So let's go over the code itself. Um, over here we have a snippet of JavaScript code responsible for uh, sending and getting messages back and forward. As you can see we have uh, two objects. We have the chat object and we have the messages object. Uh, the chat object represents uh, the WebSocket chat logic, uh, the model, and the messages object represent all uh, texts we see in the chat. Uh, let's first take a look at the messages object. As you can see, we take care of uh, defining uh, just one method, the add methods. Uh, it is a method that if you invoke it, then the text you pass over is added to all other texts. Uh, we see within the specific div that uh, shows all messages. Now let's take a look at the chat object. Uh, as you can see we have uh, a function, it's named connect. As you know in JavaScript it's very simple to add new properties to object that already exists and here we simply add the property connect and assign it with uh, a function, a very long function. A function that the first thing it does is just verifying that WebSocket is uh, supported and once it is verified over here uh, it takes care after adding uh, the on open function, a callback function uh, which is now added to the uh, socket property, socket property currently old uh, a reference for a null object. Null is also an object in um, JavaScript. And over here I just uh, add the property on open. Uh, on open that will be invoked when the connection is opened and over here uh, this uh, code snippet uh, takes care of the two things. First uh, to enable the user to send texts just by uh, entering the text and uh, press enter. So if he goes and say hola and press enter, uh, the text is over sent by calling the send message uh, function uh, defined over here. Send message function uh, just uh, fetch the text that was entered and send it um, to the server side and of course delete the text uh, from the text field so the user can enter uh, another message right after. So this is the first thing we define over here, the function on open for the socket object. Then we define the on close. So when the connection is closed, the user will no longer be able to uh, send messages. Over here we define the callback function on message that simply takes care after uh, adding every incoming message to the messages of the chat, meaning to those messages with you over here. Here we define the function initialize. Initialize actually takes care after doing the first initialization uh, just by calling the function uh, connect that was defined over here. So as you can see the first thing that happens on the client side is invocation of the initialize function and then this code is executed indirectly 
connect is executed and the rest was already explained before we verified that WebSocket is supported uh, define a few more uh, functions for the socket, socket object and from that moment on the chat works just fine.